Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today here. And uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, please uh, give us another five uh, five minutes uh, for the presenter to join the meeting. And if you, uh, if anybody has any uh, questions from previous sessions, uh, please feel free. And uh, we all here we can discuss. Uh, if there is any other questions, there we all are here. Anyone has any uh, questions or concerns that you want to discuss before the session starts? I think it would be, you know, uh, like uh, what, what are the gaps between coaching and training science? What the coaches look into and how we could fill up those gaps. So if any coach has any uh, thing to suggest from the sports scientists, what gaps are there, then yeah, we'll try to get some topic in relation to that. So Hari sir, uh, we know you're here. So um, any uh, thing that you think, how we can cover this gap between our coaches and the sports science team? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon all. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah, I mean, as, per, uh, as per me, uh, now the sports science, uh, even earlier sports science was working. But uh, now we have long, but uh, they were lack of strength in earlier times. But now the the that uh, strength cap has been fulfilled. And I hope so when the athletes come back after this uh, situation, current situation, then the entire team will be built up. So this is a preparation phase which is going on. So after this education uh, things, when the athlete comes back, then I think so a healthier session will be there, and we can hope for the prospects which is we are aiming at. Then it will be easy. Okay. So coaches, they can design the workout and uh, scientific support. They can get all the support which they wanted. And uh, it'll be easy to move in, uh, in one for the one goal. That's it from my side. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other coaches wants to add on anything? How we can fill up this gap between coaches and sports science team? Mandal sir, anything uh, you would want to um, add on here? Actually, in between my connection got failure that uh, what was the thing actually, what we are discussing? So we, we are trying to uh, reduce the gap, the communication gap or uh, between the coaches and the sports science team and um, how the sports science team can help coaches better. So we want to do the topic. All the sports scientists, we have to be made acceptable to all the coaches. That is our main task. I have 28 years se bahut koshish kiya tha. Abhi bhi kar raha hu. Pata nahi hai kitne din kar paunga, kitne ghanta kar paunga. So first of all, the, all the scientists, they have to be make them acceptable to the coaches. Ki abhi current chala gaya, abhi saith dik nahi dhe raha hai. So our main duty is whatever we are doing. Dekhiye, bazaar mein koi bhi product, agar usme it is if it is not fruitful, no body will purchase. Koi jaega nahi us dukan mein. Agar ab sell well nahi karoge khud ko thik se, to koi nahi karega. To ham jo kar raha hai, wo kitna apna coaching ke liye, training ke liye kitna implemented hai. Instead of all this paperwork and all this big big booklet, all these things. उससे तो अच्छा है मैंने पटियाला में एक वर्कशॉप अटेंड किया था उसमें कुछ क्यूबान एक्सपर्ट आया था उसमें एक मेडिकल डॉक्टर था एक ट्रेनर था एक स्पोर्ट साइंटिस्ट था तो हमने उसको पूछा था कि हम ये ये करता है आप क्या-क्या करता है उन्होंने जो दिखाया था 
हम जो कर रहे हैं उतना कुछ नहीं करता है लेकिन उन्होंने बोला हम जो जितना करता है उसको हम इम्प्लीमेंट करता है सो फर्स्ट थिंग इज दी हाउ मच वी आर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग ड्यूरिंग ट्रेनिंग एट लीस्ट आई हैव ए बिग हाई होप दैट ऑल दिस यंग पीपल यू पीपल आर देयर सो यू हैव टू टेक दैट बटन या हिंदी में जो बोलता है परंपरा का कलश आप लोगों का हाथ में हमने थमा दिया है अभी या ऑल द यंग स्ट्रेंथ एंड कंडीशनिंग एक्सपर्ट एंड यू पीपल द फिजियोथेरापिस्ट यू हैव वेरी वेरी नॉलेजेबल एनर्जेटिक so it is your duty it is our not your it is for everybody's duty we have enough resources we have so only thing we have to encourage ourselves and what we are doing we have to have the confidence jo hum kar raha hai wo training mein kitna implement ho raha hai jo hum test kar raha hai us test ko result hum discuss kar rahe hain ultimately whether it is implemented or training that we have to see among coaches also definitely why they will not listen everybody will listen and now it is the coaches also they are very very intelligent they know everything so we have to make them first we have to make or go the confidence to them then automatically the already hamara idhar south center mein hamara ek hai ye gap bahut hi kam ho gaya hai to jaisa wo dekha na dono taraf se aata hai wo jo railway track hota hai na wo jo metro work hota hai dheere 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 almost just itna sa aa gaya hai bas itna abhi touch hone ke baki hai ye thank you very much thank you okay sir. okay we'll uh, we'll start the session see actually it's raining heavily in bombay as yes, per sir. rakhi so before she gets uh, disconnected we yes, start sir. yeah yes. good afternoon sir can you hear me now yes yeah yeah yes, yes, rakhi uh, and invited me specially that's why i stopped my class and i joined here my uh, diploma class chal raha tha madam rakhi madam <laughs> yes sir sir it's it's raining extremely heavily over here yeah yeah so please, i'm so sorry about care, it madam, and please. and this is please. yeah so this is Take the first time it has happened in so many days that uh, Yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you sir thank you thank you madam Rakhi can and, i start the session uh, yes yes hira yes please yes please yes. um again good afternoon everybody um so uh, uh, rakhi here is a physiotherapist at bangalore uh, sai center and she has been worked uh, previously with uh, indian cricket uh, women's team and now she is a present physio for junior hockey team and uh, we hope uh, we uh, get a lot of expertise a lot of insight from her experience and we would like you guys to uh, participate uh, in in this interactive session and uh, rakhi you can start the session yes hira uh, uh, so can i share the ppt is my ppt visible not yet okay uh, bhaskar sir can you please allow me to share the ppt yes ma'am i give co host you can share actually you do okay. one thing you just cancel that uh, windows and just again you you, you start ma'am it will share okay sir okay sir okay okay sir yeah uh is the ppt visible to everyone now yeah it's visible uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am okay okay a uh, good afternoon all uh, myself rakhi i'm a sports physio currently with uh, sai bangalore and uh, for starting presentation i think can i just switch off my video is that okay with you all uh, because then the internet will be more stable okay so uh yanamoishu yeah okay so good afternoon all and i hope you all are taking care in this time of pandemic uh, please take care of yourself and please take care of your uh, people around you uh, stay safe and stay healthy so coming back to a presentation uh, so we can see that sports bring the world together uh, over here uh, we can see give the example of olympics olympic is such a global event uh, athletes from different parts of world come together and right now even in the midst of pandemic uh, people are working together to make this happen so sports definitely brings the world together i would also like to give you another example of the same uh, where we can see ipl india premier league uh, all these cricketers all around the world for that event of ipl they come together they come together from different ethnic city different cultural backgrounds everything is different but they come together in a team and they work as a team and work towards only one purpose is to win for the team so that's how sports bring the world together 
I have been working in the field of sports for almost 11 years, and I would like to accept that it's a totally different world. It's a totally different community in itself altogether. Uh, with each and every day I spend in the organization, I spend on the field, I spend with the athletes, there's always something new to learn about it. Uh, so basically what happens is in terms of sports that if you go to see uh, sports, the perception of sports in the world has totally changed. Initially, sports was seen as a recreational activity, but now it has given a tag of professional activity. Now, people take up, athletes take up sports as a career. In, 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 few, uh, in the older days, that was not possible. It was just as a recreational activity, and there used to be very few tournaments, but now people take it as a very serious career. And also the global perspective towards sports has changed. Athletes represent our nation these days. So with the growing popularity and with the growing professionalism in the sports, the pressure on the athletes has definitely increased. The pressure from the society on the athletes and on the sports organization has definitely increased. Uh, in that whole process, athletes are currently pressurized a lot and a lot of competitions which happen. There are a lot of expectations from the society. So in this process, uh, because of this whole process, uh, the expectation of performance is extremely high. So what happens typically with the athlete, right? So athlete has to make himself. So even in our day, regular lives, when we want to evolve as a person, uh, the uh, to let go of what we are and to become what we are not. So to let go in for in terms of the example I'll give about athletes. So athlete has a specific skill skill set, a specific physical strengthening program, a specific mental uh, attributes. But he wants to if he wants to progress as an athlete, he has to change his skill training. He has to get better. He has to change his physical training at every interval, and he also has to change basically the way he looks at life, the way he looks at the game. So there's a lot of mental. So if you go to see the process of making an elite athlete is a make and break process. Every day the athlete is going to the uh, gym or going to the field, learning the skills. It's making, breaking, making, breaking. The whole process of making and breaking is an evolutionary process, which helps the athlete to kind of, you know, kind of achieve his dreams or achieve his purpose. So in that process, sometimes what happens if there's an imbalance between that process of make and break, then the physical break can happen. Because sport is such a dynamic activity, it just involves the physical movements in terms of the skill training or the strength training. So on daily basis, the athlete is going through a physical body breakage. But when there is an imbalance between that make and break process, for example, if I can give you, if there's a lack of recovery, if the sessions are too compressed, if there's too much to be done in a lesser time, he will break. And when he breaks, it can be in a form of physical injury, which is very common. But if you go... Two examples where the elite athletes who have already kind of, you know, achieved their mark in these sports has broken. Someone like Virat Kohli, someone like Serena Williams, Michael Phelps, then Sarah Taylor, who's the England captain of women cricket team. At the peak of their career, they have all broken because there's so much of expectation, so much of pressure, which is happening uh, within the athlete. So coming back to our next slide. Uh, Rakhi, your PPT is uh, actually stuck. Yeah, now yeah. it's it, it, fine. Okay. Yeah. So, like talking about injuries in sports now, we can see a picture over here which shows uh, the injuries which happened in Rio 2016 Olympics. So, we can see here Sarah Menzies, she is a judo player. She broke her arm during the event. Uh, this lady over here is Van Gluten, she's a cyclist, and she had fractured her three vertebrae along with her concussion injury in the head. She was out of the event. He said, 
he broke his uh, leg he had fractured his leg during the pole vaulting event and this is not the first time he actually broke his leg it was even previous olympics he had broken the same leg again and again and the last one ellie downing she had broken a neck during gymnastic event so you can see over here that the life of the athlete is full of injuries and but then he still performs he absolutely performs but injury will come hand in hand in sport so coming to a next slide even though injuries are prevalent with those injuries there are few legends who are born so before that so now it's it's very simple what of sports injury sports injuries are injuries that happen while playing sports or exercising very simple definition uh, it's very obvious that this injuries can happen while playing sports but also in my experience uh, let's go slightly off the sport many people who do gymming in their regular life the non athletic population many of the sports injuries also happen during the exercising in the gym or doing their cardio because they don't have a proper support like how to do the exercise what to do the exercise what should be the intensity what should be the volume of the exercise so very simple definition over here so going back to yeah so before getting into more details of uh, what sports injuries are i will take you through a basic anatomy of how muscle tendon and ligament looks like so here this is just a diagrammatic representation of a joint it is not exact joint of a body but it closely resembles the knee joint so you can see a muscle over here okay so <clears throat> see what is the function of the muscle it's very simple it contracts and it relaxes Uh, i will try and start my video just to give an example of what muscle does in a very simple way all right so this is the rubber band can everyone see the rubber band so this is what a muscle does it stretches it contracts it stretches it contracts so basically uh, muscle helps with any movement in the body okay whatever movement with you walking running jumping or even movement like talking smiling is done by a muscle muscle has two activities one is to do the movement but one is also to maintain your posture so when we talk about maintaining the posture now we all are sitting even that time you'll feel the muscle is relaxed but it is not relaxed it is still contracting still working so the main function of the muscle is to do a movement and also to keep your body in certain state of a posture whether it's standing sitting another kind of muscle in a body is something which is not in our hands the contraction is not in our hands and that is the heart muscle so the heart muscle is also its heart is a muscle it's a pure muscle but the only difference is between a normal skeletal muscle and the heart muscle is the heart muscle is involuntarily contracting we can't stop we can cannot control the heart but over here if i want to sit i will sit if i want to walk i'll walk it's voluntary it's in it's in my hand but the heart muscle it is involuntary in nature but sometimes due to some physiological changes the heart can go up and down and there might be some issues with the contraction so this is a very simple uh function of muscle coming to tendon we can see the tendon over here so it is connecting the bone and it is connecting the muscle so tendon is nothing but a extension of muscle but its main role is to fix the muscle to the bone so that the movement can happen over the joint so when the muscle contracts because it's attached to the tendon the movement at the joint will happen ligament so what is a ligament so can you see ligaments over here these are the ligaments so if you can see over here there are two bones so ligaments are nothing but they connect two bones to form a joint if there are no ligaments if the ligament is broken the bone may move here and there there will be instability 
So this is a typical function of ligament. It holds the two bones together and it helps to keep the joint in a stable, nice aligned position. Coming to our next slide. <clears throat> so yeah, so as I said, that uh, injuries is a part of athlete's life, but that doesn't mean that there are no legends born. He is the king of clay, Rafael Nadal. So if you go to see Rafael Nadal, sorry, his injury started first time when he was at the age of 16. So you could see the history of injuries over here. Right wrist in 2014, right forearm in 2007. If you could see, there are a series of knee injuries in year 2008, 9, 10, 17, 18, 18. Raki, we are uh, your voice is breaking. Left foot, four, five, six, and next story. We all can you hear me now, Hira? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, okay. So coming back to a god of cricket. So we all know Sachin suffered a major tennis elbow issue. In fact, uh, in year 2006, 2007, uh, there was a lot of news in the media saying that Sachin endulkar. That means his in injury was so severe that people were saying he just to end his career. But he underwent Raki, are you there? Raki, are you able to connect? Can you hear me now, Vera? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry for this. I'm really sorry. It's it's very unfortunate, actually. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Yeah, I think so we should do this again. <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to share the screen now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Bhaskar, sir? Raki, you're still the co-host, so you can share this. Screen. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough, fine. Take care. Okay, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, everyone. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Ida, is my video on? Um, no, your video is not on. Okay. And can't see your screen yet. You can't see my screen. All right. No.
Okay, share the screen. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, can you see the screen now? Yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah. So coming back to Sachin. So in 2006-2007, uh, media had really hyped his injury. And they said that, you know, just to end his career, there was a tagline saying Sachin Endulkar. But uh, he underwent the surgery. And uh, later, he got absolutely healed, but he was still struggling. But he still kind of decided to go on. And that's how he became the god of the cricket. So, but over here, the key point is that they are performing the field, but there's a lot and lot of work which happens at the back end, at the backstage. That includes family, that includes the coach, that includes the strength and conditioning coach, that includes the physiotherapist, that includes the masseurs, nutritionist, biomechanist, physiologist, biochemist, and psychologist, along with the video analyst and the manager. So this is only, only possible when a team is working in a collaborative way. Otherwise, it is difficult for the injured players to actually perform at this level and still become legend. So there is this series on Netflix on Andy Murray. It's called Resurfacing, Andy Murray. And everyone should actually watch that uh, Netflix documentary. So Andy Murray suffered from a severe hip injury. And he was struggling for many, many years. But even in that struggle, he was still trying to play and recover, play and recover. In that uh, documentary, what he goes through mentally has been shown very clearly. So without this kind of team support, it is impossible for the legends to become a legend. Uh, we all play a very, very important role. In fact, when a few years back, I started, as I told, I started my career very early in the sports. This amount of collaborative work was not there. And I'm very thankful that at SAI, uh, you know, the people are collaborating with each other, the departments are collaborating with each other just for one purpose. And the purpose is athlete. The purpose is to get athlete his medals or fulfill his dreams. And this is a great job we all are doing over here and you should pat your backs for this. So coming down to our next slide. So the common injuries, what we can see in sports is concussions, tennis elbow, fractured collarbones, rotator cuffs, ligament sprains, muscular strains, side stitch, low back strain, pyreformis, ankle sprains, shin splints, cramps, stress fractures, pulled hamstrings, Achilles tendinopathy. So these are the arena of sports injuries. But the type of sports injuries and what an athlete will suffer will depend upon the demands of the game. So to give an example of athletics, in an in a event like athletics, there will be a lot of lower body injuries. There will be a lot of overuse injuries in terms of uh, simplicis, hamstring pulls, a lot of ankle issues, also stress fractures. So stress fractures is one of the issues and one of the uh, uh, pathology, which usually goes undiagnosed because there is no much pain and there's no proper swelling. There's no like a evident functional disability. So something in, uh, in games like, you know, athletics where too much of stress is happening at a one particular area, stress fractures can happen. Also, stress fractures are very relevant in cricketers, especially the medium pace bowlers, and it happens at the spine. Also, in uh, games like judo or events like judo, a lot of hip issues happen. Again, that can be a contributing factor in, for the stress fracture. In stipple chase, uh, this is a very uncommon injury, but it is fine in stipple chase. In stipple chase, there's something called the sacral bone stress fracture. So, what is a sacral bone? So I will just give you an, so this area where we usually sit on, we call it a tailbone. This is called the sacral bone. There's a sacral bone over here. So what happens in stipple chase, the athletes are jumping and it puts a lot of stress over here. So you can see in this picture itself, the athlete is trying to jump and it's pushing a lot of pressure in this area. So that's how different injuries happen in different sports, depending upon different demands of the sports. Usually in body contact sports, uh, concussions, 
are very common. Nose breaks are very common. Uh, in sports like where overhead activities are there, weight lifting is there, a uh, lot of shoulders happen. Dislocations, especially dislocations are very common in shoulders and especially in uh, events like weight lifting or power lifting, where the weight of the, whatever weight the athlete is taking is more than his body weight. And sometimes even if a small technical glitch or if the player is not recovered, something like that can happen. So we have to take care about the recovery and the mental state of the athlete at that stage. Coming to our next slide. So the injuries are classified uh, depending upon two areas. One is the onset of the injury and one coming to the type of the injury. So when we talk about onset of the injury, the injuries are classified into acute injuries, chronic injuries, and overuse injuries. So what are acute injuries? Acute injury can happen suddenly in an activity or during an activity, like a player falls, you know, like player hits against the bat, or player collides against, or player strains, or, you know, twists his knee because he fell in the wrong direction. So these are the acute injuries which happen immediately during the activity. So further classifying the acute injuries, there can be direct injuries which is caused by the external force. So the external force is a force which is coming from the outside. So as I've given you the example, something like collision between the player or between the player and the equipment or getting hit by a hockey stick or bruising. Bruising is typically on a thigh when you know a ball is hit very badly on the thigh or fractures and cuts. So usually even the open wounds like cuts or grazing is classified as a direct injury because there's bleeding and because it has happened by an external force, by falling or by rubbing against the surface. And what are indirect injuries? So indirect injuries are caused by internal forces. Something like, you know, the player is fatigued and he still kind of kicks very badly. So there's a sudden change in the force which a muscle or a ligament may not be able to take. So the, the force is created inside the body itself. And that's how we kind of, you know, classify it into indirect injuries. So indirect injuries can be sprains, strains, or if it's severe, then it can go into a tear, maybe a ligament tear or the muscle tear. Going to our next slide. Chronic injuries. So chronic injuries will always start as acute injuries. So acute injuries is happen. So for example, I'll give you my example. Okay, today I have probably had a fall. I have strained my ankle, but I ignore it. You know, I say, oh, nothing. I'll just continue with the game for whatsoever reason. And I don't treat it in the right time. But automatically after a few days, you know, the pain will subside, the swelling will subside, but there is still some pain over there. So the injury is now gone into an old zone. So acute injuries can be defined as injuries which are from day zero to maybe say eight days or nine days. But after that, sometimes when the injuries prolong for a longer period of time, we term it as a chronic injury. So in my case, I had twisted my ankle. I didn't take care of it. I didn't do any rehab. I still continue to play. But that injury is still not healed. Now what happens over here is I, I'll try and keep it very simplified. So when an acute injury happens, so today I'm injured, okay, my body will get a signal, ki, oh, there's an injury. Let's start the healing process. So the, the, there will be a lot of chemicals which will be released. There will be a lot of cells which will be released, which will start the healing process. That's, it happens when I take proper care. The healing process is on and on. But in, in other case, if I am injured today, okay, and I don't take care of it, I don't rest out well, I don't support the part very well, if I don't do the monitored activity, I still let the is getting again and again. It kind of stop the healing process. So, if you go to see the chronic injuries take longer time to heal. 
Saki, we are losing you again. Madam, voice is breaking. Best, I think, and let. Raki, we are losing uh, your voice here. Can you hear me now again? Yeah, we can hear you better Sorry. now. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Sira, can you hear me? Yeah. Is it fine yeah. now? Yeah, it's fine now. Okay. It's fine now? It is. Go ahead. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, I was talking about chronic injury. So, what happens is if the injury is not, uh, you know, kind of taken care initially, so the brain will forget that there's an injury because we are constantly kind of restressing it again and again. The healing process slows down. So, when the uh, injury gets into chronicity, then the overall rehab time is increased. So that's how it is very important to assess the injuries in the first place and to get it done treated in the right way. Also, chronic injuries happen when a certain acute injury is not healed properly. And if the muscle is not strengthened properly after the acute injury, that's when the chronic injury can again reset in because the muscle was weak. Key is that Whenever there's a chronic injury, especially I'll give an example of muscular injury, okay? So whenever there's an injury of body, a muscle injury in the body, because of the injury itself, a 30% is a neural inhibition which happens. The brain gives a signal, okay, let's, let's protect that joint. So in that signal of the protection of joint, the muscles are inhibited. And when the muscles are inhibited by the brain, there will be muscle weakness. So usually, you know, like we, we come across many questions. So why so much long to injury to heal? Why so much long to rehab to happen? But we need to understand the fact over here that the muscle goes into weakness. Primarily because of that injury, there's an inhibition. And also secondary because the player is out of action for a certain period of time. Then to build up that muscle strength, it takes time. So usually in chronic injuries or any kind of uh, injuries which are severe, the rehab should be timed in a proper manner. It should be monitored. So this is about chronic injuries. Now coming to overuse injuries. So overuse injuries happen when a certain area of a body part is overused again and again for the activity. To give a simple example of overuse injuries, something like stress fractures. Stress fractures happen when that area is used constantly, repetitive force, repetitive force, repetitive force. And when, after a certain time, because of lack of recovery, if the pressure is still on, then overuse injuries can happen. So stress fractures, tennis elbows, back pains are very classical of overuse injury. Even rotator cuff injuries in the shoulder are very classical of overuse injuries. Coming to our next slide. So this is how the cycle of over injury happens. So example, there's a overloading today. The tissue injury happens because it's overloaded and it's not healed, it's not recovered properly. The recovery is not enough. The tissue, tissue will get injured because we're continuing the activity because there's no enough rest. The tissue will get all the more injured. So when the tissue gets more injured, there'll be pain, there'll be inflammation, which will happen over here. If at this point, if the rest is happening, great recovery of the injury. But if player again continues to do it in the pain, then more inflammation and the cycle goes on and on and on. And this can lead to something called a very chronic injury, which then can take uh, lots of time to heal. So I've experienced many coaches, you know, like who still has those old injuries with them. Lots of coaches I've come across. Like, you know, they, when they usually come to us, uh, you know, when we ask, hey, how long is this injury? Oh, this had happened in my playing days. So that is a typical case of chronic injury because the right rehab had not happened, the right treatment was not given, the right strengthening was not happened. So that's how the chronicity of injury can stay up to years. And another point where I would like to say over here is eventually, okay? So when the joint is not rehabbed properly or the injury is not taken care of properly, what happens is in a very long term, 
the degeneration of the joint can happen very early. To give an example, an athlete had a knee injury. It was not, uh, you know, kind of cleared up properly. But he continued to play over the years and years and years. So in this case, there's a high possibility that he is more prone to arthritic changes. So that is the ultimate of an injury which is not healed. So that's why we all, even as a support staff, we need to kind of take care of our injuries. Because I know that there are lots and lots of coaches who still live with the injuries. And there is still a lot of scope for the injury to get healed and have a bet, uh, lead a better life. Coming to our next slide. So here we spoke about, you know, the classification of injuries depending upon the onset, that's acute, chronic, and overuse. And here when we talk about injuries, the type of injury. So uh, it can be divided into heart tissue and a soft tissue. So heart tissue is simple. Heart tissues are the bone injuries. So here he's having a fracture of a tibia. And, and soft tissue injuries are the injuries which involve damage to the skin, muscles, tendons, ligaments, or cartilage. So why bone is called the heart tissue? Uh, we all know that bone is very, very strong structure, extremely strong structure. That's the structure which is made up full of calcium. So it's very hard to break. So when something like a bone fracture happens or a stress fracture happens, that means there is really some major issue with the player's recovery. Even when it happens during an event with a patient, usually a bone should not get fractured until this player is really, really in a too much of a physical pressure or the mental pressure. That's when something like this can happen. And if it's a kind of a contact sport, then the hard injuries are very common. Like a nose fracture is very common. Even uh, in, in hockey or even in cricket, you know, the hit with the ball at the wrist, the wrist fractures are also very common. But in the contact sport or where, you know, the ball is hitting some like smaller joint like a wrist. When we talk about soft tissue injury, as I said, soft tissues are the soft structures of a body. Skin, muscle, tendons, ligament or cartilage. So soft tissue injury, again, divided into two, open injury, close injury. So open injuries will usually have bleeding, for example, cuts, grazes, blisters, and chafing. Close injuries are under the skin. There will be no bleeding. There can be internal bleeding, like bruising, but no external bleeding. It can be otherwise muscle pull, okay, or muscular strain, or sprains. Coming to our next slide, open injuries. So when we talk about open injuries, cuts, sometimes uh, it can be a deep cut, okay? The primary, uh, the first aid is to stop bleeding and allow the blood to clot, clot. So in an event when there's a cut, okay? And if the cut, if the physio assess or if there's no physio and if uh, there's a coach, then if the cut is very deep, the blood is not stopping, then we have to get it stitched right away itself. He needs to be referred to a proper health professional to get it stitched. And another aspect of cuts is to cover it as quick as possible to avoid further infection. In this image, we can see grazing. So grazing is nothing but the skin pulls off. The superficial layer of the skin pulls off. Grazing is very common in cyclists because they usually have a fall and they skid off the road. Also very common in you know athletes or the sports where they fall and they skid, something like hockey or something like cricket. They take a run and they skid. They skid to catch a ball. Over here, again, the grazing can be, they are very, very painful. And more than painful, they burn a lot. And with the burning, the player can't focus on his game or performance. So again, over here, it's very important to kind of, you know, cover it with the right ointment or the right treatment. Coming to the next part of open injuries, blisters. So blisters are very commonly found in athletes or long distance runner. And even though they look very small, but they do affect performance of the player at a very high extent. Blisters are also very, very common 
uh, in games like badminton so what happened in badminton is any indoor sport okay which is played in the uh, close surroundings where the humidity is very high and a game like badminton the game is very high intensity the player sweats a lot in the shortest duration of time so when there's a sweating and when they are wearing the socks the socks usually tend to get wet and when there's a wet there will be lot of friction which will be happening there will be lot of humidity in that area which will happen and that causes blister so the uh, tip to avoid blisters especially in such intense game is to change the socks whenever possible between the breaks also sometimes blisters happen in young athletes i have seen that that uh, many athletes you know whose shoe size keeps on changing very quickly but for some of the other reason probably they are not aware about the body and what happens is keep on wearing the tight shoes and more the tight shoes the more pressure on the skin and sometimes they fail to understand what's happening and they fail to report so that's when we also have to take care in the young athletes especially with the shoes that uh, the shoes are of right size and they are wearing proper socks the socks hygiene is maintained to avoid something like blisters because again blisters can cause lot of severe restriction in the sporting function so coming to chafing chafing is nothing but the rash looks very simple but it's not very simple players get affected by it a lot rash is very common in groin areas so you know usually athletes wear a double layer of clothing clothing equipments there are cycling shorts which is not very uh, body friendly material so what happens is due to constant friction between because of the movement there is a friction between the skin and the clothing equipment and then the rash happens and what happens is many a times i have experienced this that few of the players don't report this because first thing they are very shy and they think that it is not important it's it's something small thing but i have seen a uh, performance getting affected because of rash also these days we are lucky that there's lot of support staff you know during the events uh, physios are there usually with the team but also currently in india there are many sports which don't have physios with the team so over here uh, it is very essential for the coach to build up that communicative rapport to build up that healthy and safe environment for the athlete so that he comes and talks to you about his wellness issues about his health issues about his injury issues because what happens in india you know this guru shishya parampara is still very prevalent so when i am slightly scared of my teacher that happens with the athletes also they are slightly scared of their teachers out of pure respect and pure love but in that process what, what happens is because they respect the teacher so much they sometimes are scared to tell the teacher they sometimes feel that teacher will get affected or teacher will get disturbed that you know and because the teacher always wants best from the student but when the student is not able to give that best performance due to certain reasons there's a, a slight uh, discomfort which happens to the student so over here as a coach and as a support staff it's very essential for us to build up that safe and healthy environment for the athlete where he can talk about his issues especially in regards to health and wellness which will affect his performance coming to the next slide closed injuries so as i told you in closed injuries there won't be any bleeding externally but there can be bleeding internally so in this picture you can see that this is a proper bruising which has happened so this might be a hit by a very hard ball this is a thigh area and you can see the clot blood clot over here in this area okay so there is a hematoma there is a clotting over here so what happens in bruising is that the blood vessels tear off they break down and then the internal bleeding happens most of times it's not very serious but sometimes the uh, Uh, impact of the ball can be so much that it sometimes affect the muscle there can be sometimes a muscle injury also so we have to take care how much is the severity of injury over here coming to next aspect of close injuries ligament sprains and muscular strains so sprains happen when the joint gets stretched in the awkward movement so this is a movement 
which is not a very uh, normal movement at the ankle it is there but if the pressure external pressure is so much then there's a pressure on this ligament which is holding the two bones together and this is getting sprained here we can see the hamstring strain which is a muscular strain in this area the strain muscles can re uh, result from muscle being suddenly or forcefully overstretched so typically uh, you know uh, muscle strains happen when the player is in slightly fatigue zone and still trying to push himself and sometimes that internal push the muscle is not able to take it that's when the muscle will get strained or it is overstretched sometimes it is overstretched beyond its normal range of motion so this is another example of closed injuries dislocations as i initially mentioned that dislocations are very common in overhead sports like weight lifting so here here you can see that this is not a normal position he has actually kind of left his short hand hanging during the event and he is in tremendous pain so what happens exactly in dislocation a shoulder joint is a very special joint it is the only joint in the body which has 360 degree of movement available we can rotate free our hand can rotate freely and no other joint in the body can rotate that freely so it's a very sensitive joint it's a very unstable joint so when basically something like a very overloading happen maybe in this case he might have slightly his technique might have gone wrong or maybe due to some mental pressure or physical pressure his his muscles were not able to cope up and this happens so usually this ball is inside this socket but it has come out and it is dislocated so this is called dislocation as told you again common in the shoulder in the overhead uh, athletes so when we talk about hard injuries as i initially mentioned fractures are hard injuries so here you can see very common in runners this is your tibia bone this is your fibula bone this is a normal continuation in the bone this is normal but here there's a break so it's considered as a fracture again this is stress fracture typically uh, in athletes long distance runners okay we can see a break over here in the tibula in the tibia so again when i talk about stress fractures in athletes one of the reasons one of the reasons can be a faulty biomechanics at foot so we all have heard about flat foot you know the arch is flat i have a flat foot i have a pronated foot so your foot structure can sometimes determine the forces which are acting on your other joints okay so if there is some issue in this area the forces which are supposed to go in a certain direction biomechanically aligned direction it won't go and it may cause a lot of pressure on the muscles and sometimes on the bone and also on the joints so whenever we do an assessment of uh, the athlete we also have to check for any faulty biomechanics at the foot so that we can provide a right kind of orthotics or in sole which will correct the alignment of the foot so that injuries can be reduced or overuse injuries can be reduced coming to next slide this is a topic which is very very important for all of us and nowadays uh there are lot of lot and lot of concussions which happen in sport uh you can see that steve smith he was hit by uh, jofra archer medium pace bowler and he had to be taken off the field uh yeah 
So I would like to give a live, ex- which I, I had experienced in my career. So I used to work with ice hockey team in UK when I was in UK. And ice hockey is a, a very strong contact sport. A lot of violence happens. And, and, you know, around the rinks, there are barricades which are very heavy. So one of these players wearing a right equipment, protective gear, everything, helmet is on. Someone, some player comes and he pushes him against that barricade. He collides, he collapses and he gets unconscious. I, I go on the rink and I see, I, I, you know, kind of try to see his response, how he's doing. He gets up, you know, he's in slight, slight kind of a consciousness. I ask him, what's your name? He cannot answer. Next question, where are you? He cannot answer. What's the time? No answer, he got no clue. What's the score? No clue. A typical indication, a typical symptom of a brain concussion is to taking off the field, first aid, hospitalization. So very, very essential for all of us to be aware when something like this happens, call up the ambulance, call up the emergency services, take off the player from the field and uh, take right uh, health professional advice, further health professional advice. Uh, also, uh, this, is, this was something severe, but sometimes uh, in, in games like cricket or hockey where the ball can suddenly hit the player. And after that, for any, any kind of injury on the face or any kind of ball hit on the face, the, as a support staff, you are supposed to go on the field and check for the symptoms. You just can't take anything for granted. Ask the player how he's feeling. Sometimes the players might feel dizzy, headache, heaviness. No taking risk. Take off the player from the ground or the field. 24 hours of monitoring. You have to check for the vital stats, the pulse rate, you know, the BP, and see if nothing is changing drastically. We have to keep him under observation. So another common causes can be of being unconsciousness, can be fainting. Fainting can happen due to severe exhaustion, severe dehydration. So I've seen a player, uh, a cricket match was going. It was a very hot day. And the players started having severe cramps in whole body. In, imagine get, getting a cramp in the whole body. And she just fainted. She was fainted, she was conscious, but severe cramps. A severe case of dehydration. We had to put her on a normal saline, uh, take her to the hospital, hospital. And she had to kind of wait for many hours before she could actually get back her, uh, you know, kind of proper alertness back. So over here, I would like to emphasize on hydration in athletes. So when we talk about hydration, it's not about just drinking water, but it's also about giving the right electrolytes to the player. So when we sweat, it's not just the water which goes from a body. It is basically the salts which goes from the body. And when we talk about salts, we're talking about salts like potassium and sodium. So in a water, you will not get any salts. So in that case, usually we see, we give ORS, we give Electrol. If you want something more advanced and something like Gatorade can be given, which has electrolytes along with the fluid. In a simple situation, if, if we don't have Gatorade, there's no ORS available. What we can do is lemon, some honey, preferably, if not some honey, then some sugar and some salt. A very basic recipe for ORS. But we all have to make sure that the athlete is not dehydrating on the field. And as a support staff on field, our duty is to keep on uh, keep on watching the athletes, okay? And ask them, have you drink, drank water? Because sometimes what happens, the athlete isn't purely total uh, in a different zone. And we have to kind of remind them, you know, are you drinking enough water? Drink water, rehydrate yourself. You know, that's what our role as a support staff is on field, apart from watching the game and observing the game. So the another cause for uh, unconsciousness can be head injuries, heart attacks, strokes, and shock. So what happens exactly in concussion injury? I'll just give you like, so hit by a ball. So there's a lot of pressure which happens in this area. So there is a concussion over here. And then it leads to a neurological symptoms like headache, dizziness, vision, uh, vision issues, memory loss if it's very severe, orientation loss. Coming to next slide. So as I mentioned, what can be the symptoms of a concussion 
is he will look very confused he just doesn't know where he is the consciousness might be lost for some time he's confused what's happening around him there'll be trouble thinking or concentrating he cannot recall the events as i mentioned you earlier that was my experience with the athlete he will act slightly different okay and if it's more severe sorry then something like headache balance issues vomiting sensitivity to light or nose blood vision can happen so a uh, few days back there was a session on cpr so i will not get into the detail we all should know basics of cpr so this is what we can do if if the player or athlete is not responding and if there is no breathing happening should shake him first first call the emergency call the ambulance and start giving the cpr the compressions and then clear his air breathing and then again start giving the artificial breathing and then if further required then there's also aed it's available on this this days and uh, you know kind of refer him to emergency service or hospital but then as as a support staff what we can do is up to here in this picture what is shown until the emergency service doesn't arrive next slide so what to do when a new injury happens or acute injury happens i'll not talk in much detail about the management but a uh, some briefing uh, we all should know this so what to do when there's a new injury if the physio is not around nobody is around you if the athlete is injured is uh, the r is missing over here so it's typically called a prizer regimen its r is missing over here the joint so if there's a very severe ankle sprain if there's a very severe ankle sprain and if if uh, if the player is not able to bear weight don't force him to bear weight you can use something like rest at injured part uh, next is icing icing helps to reduce the inflammation and it will prevent the further uh, swelling to happen next is the compression where you compress the joint with like a, you know a compression a stock or a elastic bandage or a crepe bandage anything can be used to reduce the swelling so that the swelling doesn't increase further and if it's a leg injury and if there's a possibility that you can elevate that area you can elevate that area keeping it on the pillow if it's especially in cases of ankle or maybe in the knee but with right support so this is the primary first aid which you can give which we all can give whenever an injury happens what you should not do when the injury happens is very very important very very important usually i see this uh, people doing in a non athletic or non sporting population so generally people do this generally but which is very very harmful never give heat Okay. Don't drink alcohol. No running because it can aggravate the injury. And a big no to massage. I've heard many. In fact, initially when I used to work in a hospital setup, a lot of runners used to come with me, come to me, and they used to say, "Ma'am, there's an injury, but we massaged." So this is a very wrong thing to do. in a new injury never ever massage because massage will although more further break the fibers which are already injured that can deteriorate the injury and that can increase the inflammation so a big no to massage and never apply heating pad many a times people ask me you know like there's a pain what should i do shall i heat it 
I said, no, don't heat it. If it's a new injury, any new injury should be iced, never heat. Heat will again increase the temperature of that local area. If, for example, if I have an injury in my knee, I have a swelling in my knee. So when there's a swelling, when there's an inflammation, already my knee is hot because there's a lot of inflammation going on in that area. So if I apply all the more heat, that means my inflammation will increase. So that's the reason we never give heat in a new injury. Heat can be given where there's a lot of stiffness in the muscles. You know, if the injury is old, chronic, degenerative, that's when we give heat. So that's we should, what we should do in the first 24 to 72 hours of any acute injury. It's about acute injury or new injury. Coming next to the approximate time taken for the injuries to heal. This is just an approximate time. It is not a sure shot rule for the injury healing to happen. So in this case, because usually injuries are divided into any injury, especially when I talk about the ligament strains and the muscular strains, depending upon the severity, they are divided into type 1, type 2, type 3. There's a grading which happens. So mild, moderate, severe. So any mild injury, if it's assessed on time, the key over here to a faster recovery is get, getting the injury diagnosed on time and to understand, oh, there's an injury. First thing, there's an injury. If you know there's an injury, then the next step. If it's assessed in a right time, at that moment, the injury time will reduce drastically. So a basic muscular strain, a basic quadricep muscular strain, okay, if it's assessed in the right time, a player comes to me on day one, ma'am, I have pain. I will assess. It might be most of the time it can be mild. It can settle off within four to five days. But in same scenario, player has injured today. And he comes to me after 10 days, ma'am, I have this pain, 10 days and nothing is happening. Then the injury will take time. Because in this 10 days, the muscle which was already stretched keeps on stretching, stretching, stretching. So there's a injury which is happening for the next 10 days. So you can imagine the amount of duration which has increased for the injury to heal. So the key for the injury recovery time is to report it as soon as possible. If the reporting is done, then the severity can be assessed and the healing time can be also assessed depending upon that. But something like a severe muscular strain, severe, so sometimes a muscle can also tear. So I remember Rohit Sharma actually uh, tearing his quadricep muscle. And it took almost a year because he had to go through and undergo some surgery. And it took almost a year. That's a very severe case. But then usually if it's a very severe uh, muscular strain or a muscular pull, it can take approximately up to four to six weeks, approximately. But again, depending upon the severity, uh, it really depends. Again, ankle sprains, if it's kind of diagnosed right, max five days, but very severe, it can go up to three weeks. Or if very severe, if, if a complete tear, six to 12 weeks can happen. Tennis elbow can take a long time because it's an overuse injury. It can take up to a year. Uh, I have seen a uh, few cases, uh, but non-sporting, non active active sporting cases. There was a mountaineer. She used to go for mountaineering and she had tennis elbow for almost two years. So what happens with any kind of, uh, you know, tendon injuries is especially tennis elbow, it's a tendon injury. Achilles tendinopathy is a tendon injury. So tendon are white in color. So whenever the structure is white in color in the body, the healing process will increase. So when the healing process increased, because there's no lack, this lack of circulation will increase the healing period. So something like tennis elbow can take a long time to heal. ACL tear, it's the commonest and the most famous injury. I'm mentioning famous because most of the athletes, most of the athletes, whether it's uh, uh, Sanya Mirza or whether it's PV Sindhu or whether it's Saina Neval, whether it's Virat Kohli, whether it's Suresh Raina, they all have suffered ACL injury. A lot of footballers have suffered ACL injury. So in ACL injury, if it's a complete tear, a complete grade three tear, uh, arthroscopy is required. Uh, the complete rehabilitation can take time up to anywhere between seven to nine months. 
depending upon the player's initial physical conditioning. But to give an example, uh, ACL tear return back to sport will happen maybe in eight to nine months for an athlete, active athlete. But it can go more than a year for a person who is not actively uh, actively involved in sport. Sport and just like a weekend warrior, so you know most of us we are weekend warriors. We play on a Saturday Sunday, but rest of time we don't do any physical strengthening. We just go and play whenever we get time. So for people like us, the uh, recovery period is all the more more than compared to the conditioning because of the diet they take care. The recovery period is reduced drastically. So yeah. If it's a mild ACL tear, grade one, grade one can take up to maybe two weeks. Sometimes, if it's a grade two, can take up to four to six weeks. Again, okay? depending upon the severity. So this is how the recovery period might vary. Right diagnosis, right treatment is very very essential in the above cases. So this, by this, we come to the end of the a presentation. And I really apologize uh, that you know the network has been an issue. It's it's a really sad, quite unexpected rains and storms in Mumbai. So yeah, thank you all, and thanks for being patient. I think so. It went a bit long. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Rakhi. It was a really wonderful presentation. A lot of information we all wanted to know about. And uh, everybody, uh, anybody questions? Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, Shankar, sir. Yes, ma'am. How far the relation between relation and confidential level between the athlete and the physio helps in coming back completely into active sports again? Rakhi, yeah. you're there. So, sir, this is a very yes, yes, I'm there. Can you hear me, Hira? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, this you. is a very yeah, this is a very excellent question which you asked, sir. Uh, it uh, uh, it's it's a very complex question, but I will tell you uh, in the way of my experience of eleven years. So, first thing is build up an amazing rapport with the player, you know, uh, to with individual player and understanding their mentality towards. Everything in life, but when we talk about sports, it's about uh, you know kind of bonding with the player and making a relationship where we get to know what he thinks about his own game, what he thinks about the sports. So it's very very essential to have the confidentiality between a athlete and a physio when it comes to injury. But also it is very essential to give a right amount of information to the coach because the coach is a major stakeholder when it comes to athlete. so we have to inform the uh, coach that this is the injury so and we have to inform what is at what phase of rehab he is so maybe give a weekly report or maybe you know give him a updates about player's injury but sometimes this is a very tricky answer you know sometimes okay sometimes few of the players are not very comfortable with the coaches i'm making a very generalized statement sometimes the player are very scared of coaches so uh, i have seen it in the in the span of 11 years that sometimes coaches are very afraid of player being injured they themselves are uh, very mentally you know kind of tormented because the player is injured so uh, it doesn't always go in a positive space for a coach you know there can be many ups and downs so in that case if if even though as a physio if i know that coach is slightly apprehensive okay so i will say i will communicate the things only which are related to his rehab okay or for example like uh, in a in a long term injury uh, there are lot of mental issues which athletes goes through so then we have a psychologist who plays a very very important role in such cases so if the player is not comfortable with sharing certain things with the coach he or she can always share with the psychologist and uh, the important over here is uh, like you know sometimes uh, there uh, i have seen that coaches try to get all the information from the psychologist also uh, i am not a very right person say whether it's right or wrong but when it is between especially when it comes to mental health 
there should be a very strict confidentiality which should be maintained between a player and psychologist and nobody else not even physio can interfere then then it's psychologist role to give us whatever related information which will help the player to come back on the field which will help the player to get back on the field so this is a very sensitive situation but as i told you if there's a good communication between all and if we all improve on our personal self you know being a better human beings and just working for athletes improvement then everything else we can forget we can just focus on the athletes improvement and athletes purpose his purpose is to play the game and more importantly it's just not about achieving medals like i have seen like you know many players i've asked him why do you want to play is it ma'am we play because we just enjoy so even that is very essential what is the output what player wants to achieve from what he does not everybody wants to go in olympics but we still have to take care of that player and make sure he's enjoying the game in a healthy and a safe environment uh, is that is that okay sir yes madam because why i have asked this question in 2014 yes, before rio olympics yes sir in men's hockey raman deep singh and birin kumar lakra have got the hamstring muscle injuries again and again okay that is uh, overused injury but okay. it took uh, even it has gone up to acl right 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 and even it took more than 12 months to recover it is only because of the then physiotherapist with the indian team mr srikant ayanga exactly especially virin kumar has come back after 12 months Yeah. In Rio Olympics, actually, that credit goes to Mr. Srikant. Yeah. That is why I asked this question regarding the relation yeah. and confidence among the yeah. coach, physio, all the supporting staff, not only physio, all the supporting staff. True, sir. Very true. In fact, I have seen many cases where uh, I had just joined a team, and I got to know some injuries which were there since like six, seven months. you know because the it was not intimated to the uh, you know the coach and then you know when the physio comes they build up a rapport and they you know always we like physios like we become like more of a what i have experienced in my 11 years is physios uh, become like more of a you know it's it's uh, it, i'm very sorry to use this word but it's more like a parental relationship which we build up so it gets very easier for them to talk certain things to us so but i think so it's also very important that even coaches at some point try and get that you know in place because it will help the athlete and nobody else we are here because athletes are here if athletes are not here yeah. nobody will be here <laughs> yeah great man good good i i satisfied great yeah uh, rakhi next question ashok sir hello can i audible madam Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, madam. It is a fantabulous uh, talk about the sports injury. Uh, Thank you, sir. One uh, in your uh, second slide, you uh, shown that the sports injury of uh, athletes. That is a third yes, picture. Sir. It is not a pole vaulting. Okay. It is a, it is a event of a table vault in gymnastics. He was okay. performing the final vault and and he went the triple salto forward. He got okay. uh, fractured in his uh, shin bone. That's not a pole okay. vaulting. Okay. Oh, thing. sorry, sir. And, uh, I I read I read in the article that it was pole landing. So maybe you uh, know it landing, might be part while, of. While 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 he was so, landing yeah. in the table table vault, final uh, this one uh, he okay, was sir. doing a handspring front triple salto yeah. and he was landing on his feet and he broken his uh, shin bone. Okay, is, sir. Yes, a, he broke a, his tibia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tibia and fibula yeah. both. Yeah, thank uh, you, sir. Thank you for the right information. Thanks. <laughs> uh, second, second one is uh, how to avoid a stress fracture of shin bone uh, in gymnastics. It is a common yeah. injury in gymnastics. It is uh, not very common, but it is seen in gymnastics, sir. But over here, the key is the recovery. because what happens in gymnastic that uh, we cannot wear for example if a player has some biomechanical biomechanical issue at his foot if he has flat foot or a high arch that cannot be corrected because it's a barefoot sport 
So the key ah, over okay. here is to strengthen the right muscles, sir, and uh, okay. lots and lots of recovery. So when I talk about recovery, uh, it is okay. uh, something like you know going for uh, very frequent deep tissue releases with the masseur and uh, seeing the loading of the athlete. If, if for example, you know what we typically do is there's a wellness form which comes, and we have okay. to daily take how the athlete is feeling today. Is he up to mark? So if that all is in place, the recovery can be uh, managed well, and then we can avoid okay. stress fractures. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. So next question by uh, Jatinder, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Kira sir. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, sir. So, uh, so ma'am, my question is: I am uh, concerned from the cycling, and yes, one of the my uh, cyclist has the uh, piriform, uh, peri piriformis syndrome. Yes, sir. Like yes, sir. Uh, near to the gluteus and the this region. Yes, sir. So sometime he has the piriform syndrome, and the sometime uh, he has the symptoms like a shatika. Yes, sir. Absolutely. It, conver it converts into shatika pain. Yes, sir. And the sir. Ner nerve uh, nerve is going to be irritated, and the pain is go through the leg, and the ankle is also be uh, has the swelling type. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. how we can uh, this uh, overcome from this type of injury? Yes, please, sir. So uh, yes, yeah. please. So piriformis syndrome. So piriform is a muscle in the glutes. It's one of the glute. glutes muscle but the muscle so what happens is you know the sciatica nerve passes inside you know it's below the piriformis so uh, when the piriformis gets tight okay due to overtraining or lack of recovery or even in cycling if you go to see this constant pressure so what happens is the piriformis will get tight and the nerve will get pinched because of the tight piriformis which will cause the neurological signs which you are explaining like you know radiation of the pain and swelling in the ankle so the key over here is uh, first thing is the assessment if the piriformis is tight which might be usually the case so something rise uh, like a deep tissue release but uh, when we talk about deep tissue release uh, in the gluteal region uh, deep tissue release doesn't work that well because the muscles are very deep And they are quite big, they are quite muscular. So something like dry needling, uh, we do something like dry needling. Dry needling typically helps with uh, issues in gluteal muscles or the piriformis muscle. And once the muscle is recovered, released well, you know, if there are trigger points in that muscle, then uh, right amount of stretching will help, and also right amount of strengthening in the glutes. So usually, what happens is uh, most of times we have seen that the glute glute muscles are weak for the athletes but if we focus on uh, uh, you know strength training in terms of isolation of certain muscles then the uh, prevention can be uh, it can be done and the recurrence of the injury can be avoided so in this case uh, definitely assessment is a first if it's a tight muscle i would prefer dry needling depending upon the severity i'm sure it's severe because it's giving the neurological signs so it's severe and then once the dry needling muscle release his symptoms will be settled yes ma'am thank you but this uh, this kind of the uh, injury is treated by the myotop type medicine is uh, can we can give this uh, uh, dr amaya is dr amaya there Okay. Okay. I uh, so so uh, usually I would like to light ratios. Uh, excuse me. During yes. the light yeah. ratios, can we can uh, give her cycling uh, uh, in the light ratios? Uh, slow cycling or the light ratio means uh, so uh, not uh, a uh, high intensity workout. Low light, intensity, right? So if low intensity if there workout. are yeah, so there are no and symptoms. It, there are no symptoms. Then you can give a low intensity workout. No problem. Can it helps us? it will not help to recover the injury but it will help for the athlete to maintain that conditioning we yes, we don't have yes. to put her on the but it will help the athlete to maintain that condition state so that her muscle there's no uh, loss of muscle strength and loss of you know uh, conditioning ability but right, it will not right. really help with the treatment it is not a part of treatment so she has to right ma'am I think voice is gone. Voice is gone. Voice I think Rakhi's signal has an issue. Ah yes, yeah, the signal is gone. 
ओके मैम एनीवे थैंक यू वेरी मच यू कैन थैंक यू सर सॉल्व द सो मच वी आंसर्ड योर क्वेश्चन या थैंक यू मैडम मैडम राजीव दिस साइड आई हैव अ सबमिशन फॉर डॉक्टर सरजू ओके सर I would like to submit. I would like, uh, Doctor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. What I, sir, uh, Doctor, I believe now she was in a. She explained in a very well manner the prize, the basic uh, aid of the injury. What I feel in my this thirty years of experiences, if possible, can we can we make some protocol, like the prize therapy, the rice therapy. how the heat is harmful how the how the massage is harmful what is the level 1 injury level 2 injury level 3 injury how we go in the process with the basic uh, the first aid and the range of motion then the strengthening and then uh, she well she very well explained the 6 month and 8 months i think i think uh, if this could happen it will reach in a simple way to all the athletes to all the sportsmen i believe still this is missing this is one point secondly can we have some forum where we have a really a specific i mean you know like last session we have a nutrition so uh, a lot many great uh, faculty members raised the question of the glycogen loading the protein protein loading maybe these are fantastic classes so my just submission if and possible in the future some sort of specific where uh, really we are talking about elite performance or a very something uh, some high hamstring injury or a very rare case something like that very specific if possible that's a submission doctor thank you as always yeah thank you uh, rajiv for uh, suggesting it i, I think uh, I, uh, i mean once our uh, our this kind of sessions are over i'm actually planning that okay every uh, friday evening session we will have it as a panel session or uh, where instead of somebody giving a lecture uh we will have a talk on injuries means okay then all the questions from the participants can be on injury can be discussed so the uh, uh, there will be five or six members in the panel and you can ask questions so what is actually related to the particular injury and uh, these people will give you a, a broad shape i mean broad view of what is the injury and how it can be uh, you know uh, rehabilitated and so on and what you said about the protocol actually there are uh, protocols existing uh, most of the physiotherapists are very much well versed with the protocols uh, but then the protocols uh, do change from uh, usage of tools what kind of tools you are using and how effective those tools are helping you now for example i'm just giving a, a example of uh, working with bobby george okay bobby george was anju bobby george as ban he was a triple jumper uh, and uh, when he had his acl meniscus and pcl tear by just actually he was just playing volleyball and in that volleyball game he got the injury and with that he went for doing the surgery and the amount of support which was given to him during the treatment that is starting from the injury you know uh, after doing the surgery he was on bed and uh, after 6 hours of surgery every one hour he had to contract the muscle and start his rehab okay just for one second only 24 hours the muscle was only allowed to contract for one second then next day next 24 hours he started to do the work for 3 seconds in the bed itself and third day he was discharged and he came and he started uh, you know he saw that okay there is no atrophy that is taking place in his non injured leg and the way he worked on from there uh, he made use of the isokinetic system like anything uh, every day he used to come to sai bangalore uh, there was isokinetic system and he thoroughly made use of the isokinetic system through isometric exercise isokinetic exercise both concentric and eccentric 
but eccentric at a later stage then he went on to the grass uh, workouts and within five and a half months he could do uh, with five try approach he could do triple jump one of the lucky thing was that this guy was very much coordinated both in his right and left leg so if you actually ask uh, i think there is mr nishad kumar uh, he was also the coach that time here yeah. so I, he used to consult him also so, regarding the thing and five and a half months he, in tata uh, that is their uh, departmental games he got gold and within eight and a half months he went on to create a national record and won uh, gold in uh, national triple jump uh, triple jump so what i'm saying is that the protocols actually it varies from individual to individual and of course the effort which is taken by the athlete in order to really work hard to uh, reach up to this it plays an important role now i'm just giving you a typical example of rajesh chawhan actually he was actually a hockey player in 1997 junior world club uh, world cup he was one of the top uh, player and he got that uh, acl tear but was never ready to undertake any workload and thereafter he had talent went off like that same way there was another guy tureshi from bhopal he was also a very good talent in hockey just died off because of his injury so uh, protocols are there actually but then yeah we could streamline it and then put it before you yeah. okay sir uh, yeah, do- yeah doctor i mean you are very absolutely perfect i would like to share the one same thing why i f- i felt like that uh, i am basically a triple jumper one of my athlete under 18 a female athlete i gave a feedback to the uh, biochemist madam also that day so same just to a feedback to you she couple of years back she has a acl injury and within within i think within 48 hours i have done the mri and then i went to mumbai fortunately one of the best doctor dr padiwala and then we could uh, because he has done my rotator cuff injury myself so uh, within 7 days we uh, he said this is it and we had a visit and this is injury it was a t- it was a total uh, i mean complete uh, tear then i explain uh, because uh, i i said doctor why this has happened in front of the parents i mean we have done all the basic training right spending very gradual into a systematic so he said uh, rajiv this is nothing about the i mean training your training is correct this can happen to any female only even walking down the stairs and uh, this this may there are possibilities we need a, we need we may need a injury we may need a surgery and there are 30% cases where it will heal uh, on their own and fortunately with the support of uh, one best uh, physiotherapist uh, i could get her back she did she was seventh in a next calendar in a sprint i didn't allow her to do triple jump and the next i mean last two year back she has done 1140 now she is not training with me since i am in sonipat so if this goes to all the athletes i mean if we can the training system has been open and if we can just simplify this with the athletes because uh, you know the training system has been open we are doing a great training but somewhere yes. this uh, uh, this injuries are bothering our athletes if we can overcome this i feel we can have a great result that's what uh, my take sir and uh, lastly if we could have some brainstorming session for coaches also yeah, yeah, yeah thank you sure. doctor as always sure. thank you very much sure sure Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Raki, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, continue, please. I think it's already four. Uh, I mean, are there any classes now for new sports scientists? Um, no, sir. No, sir. We don't have any. Okay, then we could have a discussion for another five to ten minutes. Yeah. Okay, sir. Raki, are you able to unmute yourself? Yeah. Sorry, Hira. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Vijay yeah. sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Am I audible, ma'am? You are audible, sir. I think Raki is audio. having some issues with um, her <laughs> network. Yeah. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Actually, uh, your session was very um, helpful for us to understand about the various kind of injuries and 
especially the acute and uh, uh, chronic injuries which uh, yes, uh, almost uh, we ignore or uh, yes, we sir. give more importance to uh, athletes performance and we ignore it so uh, it was a session to open our eyes to towards that um, uh, especially with chronic injuries that we uh, ignore but the thing is sometimes in coach's perspective uh, what i what i think um, when we are training some athlete in some point we feel like uh, it is more important than a um, injury we, we are giving importance to a performance maybe because some some situation like some job opportunities or some very crucial um, competitions in the in that kind of situations we are giving more importance to uh, performance so yeah, what, what my point is like in kerala in kerala we, when i was an athlete in kerala we were used to go through a treatment which is ayurvedic treatment yearly once yes, we are going to uh, do that event uh, do that t- treatment actually so what is the benefit we were getting that uh, with that treatment is uh, after this all one year continuous training when we undergo this uh, kind of treatment ayurvedic treatment we were feel like we we were refreshing our body yes sir and uh, uh, like it it will took like uh, 15 to 45 days depending upon the injuries uh, the athletes having and in kerala um, we have like government ayurvedic hospitals and it is uh, free of cost anybody yes. can uh, any any athletes can avail it so it, for us athletes it was very easy to undergo this, this kind of treatment so what, what, I, what my question is or my suggestion is, is there any is there anything like this in modern um, treatment uh do we can suggest any kind of this uh, treatment yearly one for our ncio athletes any kind of treatment or procedure we have yes sir can you uh, i i actually uh, missed you i could not get so uh, if i if i am not mistaken you are asking me that whether ayurvedic can be also taken along with the physiotherapy is that right no uh, the thing is um, i don't know whether in everywhere ayurved ayurvedic treatments are available but my question is like if you have a kind of treatment that same similar to the ayurvedic treatment what my yes, point sir. is yearly once if you are going through recovery yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah usually we were having a um, after the competition we will be having a uh, gap yes sir so that gap okay. shall we shall we use it for recovering of the athlete old injuries is uh, chronic injuries and all yeah i i Yeah, I yeah. got you, sir. So uh, my point over here is that if an athlete is injured during the tournament phase, right? So the recovery also becomes a key during the tournament phase. So we can't keep the athlete in the injured state, make him play the competition, and then do the recovery because when the athlete is not recovered, his performance is definitely going to drop down. De- definitely guaranteed. So. Uh, after the competition phase is over if his athlete is in in the off season okay so along i uh, you can do this treatment but not because there were previous injuries and you are treating those injuries after the competition that is not a, a right approach we also need to deal with those injuries there and self in the competition phase so you can do it in the off season no problem along with the other scientific approaches i understand even ayurvedic scientific it gives amazing results no doubt about it but it it definitely can be one form of recovery no doubt about it but also very important that we have to take care of the athlete during the competition phase when he is injured there itself so the rehab will continue during the competition and post competition because you can't we are not allowed that the athlete will suffer competition is one part a uh, athlete playing in a right state of mind with right state of physical state is also very important so it's like you know uh, i'll give an example okay so something goes wrong on field uh, there's a match going on there's an ankle sprain okay so always on field uh, taking the situation of the match the uh, the player is very important for the team he is the important batsman okay i assess him i say that okay uh, he can play with strapping on okay he can play you know if he's kept in a certain position safe position 
but the choice of uh, athlete going on the field and playing is his choice i will say my advice coach will give his advice but as a athlete he is an individual he has his own decision to make because finally we are support staff we cannot take decision for the athlete's future like here you might probably tell me ki no no he has to perform no no his, comp- his you know performance will get reduced his ranking will get reduced but as i told you we are only the support staff the primary uh, uh, decision in an adult athlete will stay with athlete so that's the thing so we cannot we have to push the player no doubt we have to push the player to the injury to the competition but with the right rehab with the right recovery uh, i yeah, i hope that, that, that answers so, your that's question that's so true ma'am that's so true but yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. what what i have told just now it is very absolutely right but my point was like if an athlete just one week yeah. back the athlete is going to participate in commonwealth games and is uh, his or her um, event is long jump okay yes so yes. just one week back he got a ankle injury okay yes, only one week yes, is there so yeah. one ankle twist can spoil her or, or his whole one year or two or how many years he, she or her, he was yes, trying sir. to achieve the the performance only one week left yeah. he got the injury so yeah. most of the coaches i don't think they will go for a rest or uh, go for a Uh, a very passive treatment most of the coaches what they will do they will give support to the ankle and they will go forward the competition am i right ma'am absolutely true yes sir yes sir yeah, that's yeah. that's I, the i was uh, just the... mentioning about this uh, particular very uh, special situations that we have to move with the performance to the sake of uh, the good for the athlete only not for true, like true. Uh, getting performance from the athlete and ge- uh, getting some uh what what we, what we call some name and all <laughs> some some situations are there i'm just mentioning rakhi you there yes sir yeah i'm there i'm there i i actually missed him so yes so sir also one more thing uh, can you hear me sir yes ma'am so yes ma'am clearly it is definitely a risk we are taking as a support staff and the risk we are taking with the athlete so it's a very collaborative approach over here the decision making is very very essential so again over yes, here ma'am. as a physio we can assess the risk of how much the injury can get bad if the athletes continue to play so that is a key role of physios when it comes to such events okay so if yes, i ma'am. let yes, the player play how how risky it is and how risky it is not so this totally lies with the physios experience with the coaches will power and a the uh, players will power so it's a very collaborative right man right man right yeah man. thank you yeah. so much ma'am yeah. thank you so much no problem sir yeah rakhi we have another question on the chat box uh, from um, yes. mary ma'am and so yes. she's asking us can you please uh, can you please throw us some light on uh, recovery modalities so yeah. so uh, yeah so uh, mary ma'am uh, good afternoon so usually the recovery uh, modalities will not depend upon the type of training role uh, load rather it will depend on the assessment of the athlete so for example athlete is just feeling a bit tired exhausted so maybe i will ask him to go to a pool take a you know a pool session hydrotherapy session that can help but the thing over here is the key is assessment so like for example athletes comes to me and tell ma'am i've got a severe stiffness in my back since many days so in that case i would not recommend the athlete to just go to the pool then i will do some active recovery something like a a deep tissue massage or if there are a lot of trigger points which are built up then i'll do for, go for needling i will do some you know active stretching or passive stretching so that can be done so uh, there are various modalities but again as i told you it will depend upon the assessment of a uh, athlete situation okay. and not only training road uh, i hope i answered this uh, question mary ma'am did we answer your question hello hello yes ma'am या आई हैव गॉट इट लेकिन समटाइम क्या होता है कि हम लाइक वीकली वेन एवर वी डिजाइन आर ट्रेनिंग समटाइम हमारा 
स्ट्रेंथनिंग पे फोकस होता है सो एब्सोल्युटली दैट द बैक स्टिफनेस होगा देन ही विल गो फॉर स्विमिंग और समथिंग व्हाटएवर लेकिन तो हम कार्डियो पे भी ध्यान देते हैं कार्डियो फिटनेस पे तो अगर कार्डियो फिटनेस है देन हाउ द रिकवरी मोर्टैलिटी इज विल बी सेम फॉर स्ट्रेंथनिंग एंड कार्डियो फिटनेस आल्सो नो सो मैम ओवर हियर एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट रिकवरी मोर्टैलिटी विल डिपेंड ऑन द एथलीट स्टेटस तो जैसे आपने बोला कि जब कार्डियो करते हैं और अगर प्लेयर मेरे पास आता है कि मैम मुझे बहुत थकान महसूस हो रही है मैं उसको पूछूंगी कि आपको कैसे थकान महसूस हो रही है आपको कहीं पे कोई पर्टिकुलर okay. एरियाज में से स्टिफ लग रहा है या टाइट लग रहा है आपको सिर्फ जनरली थकान महसूस हो रही है okay. तो अगर सिर्फ थकान महसूस हो रही है तो हम जैसे पैसिव है जैसे वो पूल में जा सकता है यू नो कोल्ड शावर ले सकता है आइस बात ले सकता है क्रायोथेरेपी चेम्बर्स रहता है वो ले सकता है या कभी कभी यू नो स्टीम सोना भी कभी कभी मदद करता है अगर बॉडी बहुत स्टिफ है तो जनरल बॉडी स्टिफनेस है तो पर मैम अगर कोई मुझे आके बोलता है कि मैम मेरा कल जिम सेशन हुआ और मेरी बैक बहुत ही स्टिफ है तो ऐसे केस में मैं सबसे पहले देखूंगी कि ये सोरनेस है क्या क्योंकि कभी कभी क्या होता है कि आफ्टर जिम या आफ्टर कोई भी हैवी स्किल सेशन सोरनेस भी आ सकता है और अगर इसमें इस केस में अगर सोरनेस है तो फिर सोरनेस रहेगा तो वापस मैं उसे बोलूंगी सर आप इधर आइसिंग करो या पूल सेशन करो पर अगर स्टिफनेस है असेसमेंट के बाद तो फिर मैं कुछ एक्टिव रिकवरी यूज करूंगी जैसे कि मसाज हुआ जैसे कि यू नो फोम रोलिंग हुआ वो सब मैं यूज करूंगी पर एज आई टोल्ड यू की वो ट्रेनिंग लोड के ऊपर नहीं डिपेंड करता वो डिपेंड करता है अथलीट अथलीट के फिजिकल स्टेटस पे उसके सिम्टम्स लेकिन मैडम वन मोर थिंग फिजिकल स्टेटस आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड लेकिन जो वीकली हम रिकवरी उनको देते हैं सपोज ट्वाइस और वंस वी हैव एवरी आफ्टर फाइव सेशन वी हैव रिकवरी फेज लाइक एक सेशन हम देते हैं तो वो तो डिपेंड करता है ना कि कब उसको डॉम्स आएगा चाहे वॉट एवर दोरनेस विल बी तो ये तो उस पर डिपेंड करता है जी बराबर है बराबर है तो फिर बट इन अगर वीकली वीकली अगर है तो बेस्ट इज टू गो टू अ पूल दैट इज द मोस्ट इजिएस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ रिकवरी मोस्ट इजिएस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ रिकवरी देन दैट विल नॉट डिपेंड ऑन योर ट्रेनिंग लोड आप कार्डियो करो तो भी यू नो पूल जा सकते हैं पर जैसे कि आपको पता है एज अ कोच की इंटेंसिटी कितनी बढ़ने वाली है जैसे कि अगर कोई पर्टिकुलर वीक में इंटेंसिटी बहुत ज्यादा हाई है तो शायद पूल सेशन आप और रेगुलर कर सकते हो और अपने यहाँ पे आइस बाथ भी अवेलेबल है अगर बहुत ही ज्यादा सीवियर इंटेंसिटी है ओके तो सेशन के बाद इमीडिएट आइस बाथ works like magic it really works like magic for the recovery aspect okay, okay. so you okay. you should also consider ice bath when it's a extremely okay. high intensity training or any kind of physical strengthening or conditioning okay and uh, one more question is like as you said uh, about ice pack or ice bath whatever so then madam how to decide when to go for ice bath or ice pack and when to uh, go for uh, hot water pack treatment जी, so i am always confused with these two aspects yeah to ma'am agar ji hello I, you are not audible rakhi no i am not Yeah, ma'am. I think she's having am, some. Am I audible? Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. 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 क्योंकि क्या होता है कि जब भी हम कोई स्ट्रेनियस एक्टिविटी करते हैं कोई भी फिजिकल एक्टिविटी करते हैं तो मसल ब्रेक डाउन आई कॉन्ट हियर हर हीरा वुड मैम बी आई टू हियर हर मेरी मैम कैन यू कैन यू हियर अस या आई कैन हियर यू बट आई कॉन्ट हियर राक मैडम हीरा वुड यू लाइक टू टेक दैट क्वेश्चन आई एम सॉरी मैम कैन यू हियर राखी नाउ आई थिंक इट्स मेरी मैम कनेक्टिविटी राखी मैडम कैन यू से समथिंग सो दैट आई कैन जी या आपको सुनाई दे रहा है नो 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 ओके नो नो मेरी मैम यू कैन हियर मी राइट आई थिंक मैम कनेक्ट देयर इज कनेक्टिविटी इशू Yeah, okay. we can connect if she wants. We can connect later. 
uh, okay yeah, okay personal chat yeah, yeah i can yeah. call you madam no issue yes, i will yes, call yes, you yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am all right all right yeah hira time yes, sir. time now okay you can wind we'll up we'll wind uh, up yeah sir yeah. uh, one question last minute sir last question ah yeah yes uh, so rakib ma'am it's a very nice presentation you described in a very lucid way just uh, yes, can you can you tell me that what is the relation between is there any relation between that particularly female athlete yes sir female, female athlete tried and fracture yes sir absolutely so this is one thing which i was uh, planning to actually put in my presentation but i thought it will get too much so there is something called female athlete triad yes yeah, uh, like the reason for female athlete triad is that if you go to see a male hormonal uh, physiology and a female hormonal physiology so there is a difference in the physiology the females kind of secret hormones like estrogen progesterone so what happens is uh, and especially with the physical activity usually the levels of testosterone in females rises compared to a normal female who is not actively in sports so uh, usually in females there's a very high risk of imbalance hormonal imbalance happening and so when this hormonal imbalance happen they are uh monthly menstrual cycles can get affected and when the monthly menstrual cycle gets affected it can be either excessive bleeding or no bleeding there there can be various gynec issues which the athlete can face so that time what happens is uh, the signs of female athlete triad is that the athletes gets exhausted for no reason a slight activity athletes get exhausted there are issues with the diet she sometimes eats a lot or sometimes she doesn't eat a lot so and she feels very very tired all the time and sometimes she will not be in a mentally good state sometimes she will be in good state there will be mood swings so the especially the dietary habits the sudden change in dietary habits and sudden change in the monthly menstrual cycles can indicate that the athlete is going through a female triad so when this happens because of the hormonal imbalance in between the testosterone estrogen and progesterone the calcium deposition capacity or calcium absorption capacity in female can reduce compared to in the males so that kind of risks her for a higher risk of injury compared to male counterpart and if you go to see in general because of the female anatomy the females are more at the risk of sports injuries compared to males the reason is uh, the pelvis anatomy of female is slightly wider so there are a lot of biomechanical changes which happens and the muscle efficiency is comparatively lesser compared to the male athletes second aspect is there's a bit more more laxity in females compared to males so when there's a laxity in the joints there's laxity in the ligaments something like acl are very very common in female compared to the males and then comes a female athlete triad where she can have issues with the diet the menstrual cycles can be uh, you know kind of it can go imbalanced and this will lead to higher risk of injury and especially uh, that's why we also need to take we have to one more thing madam that loss of bone mineral also that is one of the reason because of the less estrogen sometimes they miss uh, the menstrual cycle one or two or maybe sometimes three cycle they miss so because of that estrogen level can come less and that because of the less calcium metabolism the deposition of calcium less and that's why the bones become so fragile sometimes yes, that i was going to the literature the small bump or even through sneezing also they can break the uh, fracture may happen yes sir yes sir that that's very true yes sir and um any more questions uh rakhi anything else you would want to add on to the session no i would like to thank uh, saju sir mandal sir pravin sir and dr amaya and hira uh, uh, thanks a lot and i'm i'm really sorry for this uh, inconvenience uh, it was quite unexpected but uh, yeah all the best to all of us uh, we, we are dealing uh, we are in a stressful times but uh, hope we keep ourselves and the others around us safe and healthy uh, yeah thanks thanks a lot thank you thank you madam thank you thank you everybody who attended today's session and uh, we would keep encouraging people to share their uh, valuable information with all of us so we can improve the knowledge between the coaches and uh, sports scientist team and thank you again for saju sir for creating such a great platform for us to discuss these things and um thank you madam thank you sir
Saju sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can wind up. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Saju.